Europe has a love affair with New Orleans. You know, in, in Oslo, fly New York, fly New Orleans. You know, we grew up with Louis Armstrong as a equivalent of Chopin. I uh, grew up in Norway. My family is rather creative. Uncles and aunts, I guess one gets inspired from that. And I wanted to be a painter from when I was 15 years old. But my family also knew how hard it was to make money in the field. So I guess they decided that since I was a creative person, I should be an architect. And I came to New Orleans in 1975. I have a master's in architecture from Tulane. It was a very strange way of being an architect, yet wanting to be a free painter, because I learned a tremendous am uh, amount of that of the interaction of humans and the psychology of it uh, through expression of forms, colors, uh, rhythms, uh, all of those things that do go into the heart of architecture. But I kept painting. The painting has always been my central point because all the other fields are really an inspiration for this issue of abstract thinking. The great thing about abstract art is that you have to deal with the fact that all your impressions are abstract. Reality doesn't occur in the brain before a few milliseconds after the reality has occurred. And I started to become very fascinated about the idea of closing your eyes and the, as the images disappear, uh, what you're actually seeing is a reverberation and you recognize that all the colors that you see when you close your eyes is the opposite of what is real. It's now it becomes a game. Now it becomes a, 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 an issue of uh, psychology. Of course that happens in figurative art too. That's not uh, what I'm saying. It's just that in abstract art that becomes the carrying vehicle. I paint as an expressionist, American expressionist. When it happens, it all happens exceptionally fast. Otherwise, it becomes stiff. And when I have a concept, I say, all right, let's go for it. I'm like, it's like uh, one of my friends, John Clemmer, uh, great painter. He um, always sit, says that uh, he sits in front of the canvas and he waits for the, the white canvas to do this to him is that I let it happen when it happens, and when it happens, it's, uh, it, it's uh, go. Uh, nothing stops me. Fractals is another source of inspiration. It's reading chaotic numbers with a formula, and it creates these absolutely gorgeous patterns. And those patterns is part of me. Those patterns are part of all of us emotional situation combined with other emotional thing ties together in a confluent situation and it, they become fractals. It's kind of the same thing in mathematics. So fractals to me became kind of instrumental in understanding psychology of colors, psychology of form, psychology of movement. Uh, I'm a colorist probably maybe more than just uh, quote form because I deal in this idea of psychological issues of colors. It's uh, trying to figure out where it is, but it, now we're also coming back into the, the, the fractals. I'm not saying that I'm painting a fractal, because I'm not. But yet I am, because if you look at my paintings, they're always contained by borders. And in the fractal, that's what's significant. The fractal uh, contains a value, or sorts on one side until it comes to the horizon. On the other side of the horizon, there is nothing. The same thing with my paintings, what is painted, what is not painted, so that people can actually try to get into this conflict, if you want to call it, and which spawns some kind of a trigger mechanism in the brain. And if I do my job right, hopefully people will see that uh, for what it is. Not my story, their story, but based on similar um, emotional statement or feelings.